afternoon slash good morning, at least in my side. <laughs> oh, yeah. Where are, where are you based out of? Uh, I'm based out of Puerto Rico. Uh, I oh, hear right on. we're two minutes, two minutes on for, for afternoon. So uh, that's why I said good morning and good afternoon. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, thank you. Yeah, I was actually just in Puerto Rico uh, for the first it, time. Uh, awesome. About uh, right, right at July 4th, actually. <laughs> great. great. Beautiful. Great, great. Beautiful place. Uh, I I love this island. Uh, I I hope that I, I I hope that me and my family can stay here for as long as we can, un unless we have to move. <laughs> yeah, yeah, here, yeah. <laughs> so well, RJ, nice. yeah, yeah. So RJ, today we're going to be talking about Crescent City. Uh, what a phenomenal film! It has so much energy, has so much mystery, thriller, so many uh twists and turns. Um, love the implementation of. How can technology be used as, as, um, as for things for for bad, you know? And I wanted to ask you, what inspired you to, you know, as soon as you read the script or as soon as they provided you the script, what inspired you to continue with this project? Yeah, so um, I, our a long long buddy of mine, Rich Ronet, the writer, um, we've done you know many scripts together over the years, uh, ten plus years together, um. And we were on a set actually in Ukraine of all places in, in 2019, shooting a movie, Rising Hog. And he started telling me all this research he was doing on serial killers. And it was so fascinating and, and, and disturbing. But for some reason, all of us as an audience, we want to watch these things because they take us out of reality and it's disturbing, but you just can't stop watching. Now, I, I would say I would not want to do this kind of story again and again and again, because you have to tap into some dark stuff. But Uh, it was fascinating, and as a child, I was uh, terrified by mannequins. My mom used to take me to the, to the to go shopping, and I'd see mannequins, and it just scared me. And so, the, one of the uh, serial killers that we based this on, uh, public domain information, was that he he had all these mannequins around, and he was pulling his victims into these rooms and seducing them, and then killing them. Sorry about that. So it's a uh, It's a, it was a very disturbing. So we were compelled to tell a story about a bunch of different true elements of serial killers. And we combined it into one movie, like a true detective style meets Zodiac. And, you know, I just know audiences really enjoy this. And I'm also a very, I look at filmmaking in a very commercial like stance, like where uh, the audience is just going to want to watch from the beginning to end because we constantly turn and twist about who the killer is. So we hook you from the beginning to the end. And so these are the, this is why this all kind of came together and we thought this was the best. So I, after the script was written, uh, I was like, we have to make this movie and COVID and the shutdown and, and uh, everything kind of slowed it down. But we got it. We got it made. We're really proud of it. Now that you mentioned um, uh, COVID and everything, what other challenges you had uh, for filming uh, this this film? Because. I do see that you guys uh, in the film, there's many, many like places, uh, locations and whatnot. But what other challenges did you go through besides COVID? Because I know that COVID was like the main one for most of these films that are, are coming out now. Yeah, challenges wise. Yes. I mean, I I mean, we had just gotten out of the protocols of having to, to test every morning for COVID. And I'll tell you, every morning, as even as a producer on these other movies and a director, It's like that constant anxiety of, is my actor going to be able to show up and go to work today? Or are they going to have to go home because they test positive? Or my DP or whoever it was. So luckily we didn't have that. <laughs> so that was one less anxiety ridden thing I had to worry about in the morning when we were setting up. But we were during a SAG strike um, and we were an independent film though, which the SAG strike really wasn't against independent film producers and filmmakers. So luckily we got our SAG waiver. That's why we were able to get this cast kind of uh, put together at the same time. But it was uh, there was a lot of scheduling conflicts and we didn't get our SAG waiver uh, for a little bit longer than we had expected. So we got pushed back. So we had a really, you know, independent film budget, you know, which is not a studio film. So we had a tight budget and we had a tight shooting schedule. But with all that being said, from shooting it in Little Rock to the film commissioner, really helping us get locations within five days. And we we're shooting two and a half weeks later. We, we had the whole entire community in Little Rock support us. And uh, we made, we had we, all those locations in the movie, like you said, we found those all in five days and prepped the movie two weeks later. It was it was insane. But we had such a good team and great producers and everybody else to support it that we made it. And uh, it was a little a little tight, I'll be honest, but we, we made it work. 
And um, RJ, I wanted to talk, uh, ask you this uh, eternal question in regards to what you mentioned, the the SAG, because I do remember the SAG strike and everything. What if, What is the difference between when the strike was going on? What's the difference between that independent films can continue moving forward on their production and what was going on with the studios? Do you have any knowledge or can you explain to us a little bit about that? Um, well, yeah, it's just there was a lot of uh, I think it had to do with AI and, and certain things um, that the actors were really protecting themselves from. So that was one of the major parts of the strike. Plus, you know, the the fringes and pension and health and all that. They just wanted to make sure there was a lot a lot of right. Like as we evolve into technology, you know, a lot of the SAG contracts were kind of built before technology was really there. And they've been kind of evolving into kind of protect their actors from that side of it. So that was all part of it. But um, look, I was in, in the Screen Actors Guild as well as a kid. I was a child actor. So I'm, I'm a big supporter of Screen Actors Guild and what they're doing. So I understood it and respected it. I just, um, but, you know, I, I'm kind of, I, I'm a man of many hats, I would say, I guess, because I do produce. I was a kid actor. I direct. So uh, I'm kind of all, see all sides of it. But, you know, I feel like in the end, it kind of worked out for everybody. Okay. And going back to, to the film, uh how was it working with with the team, with your whole cast and crew? And as well being the fact that you you do have uh, big hitter names on the film. You have Terrence Howard, you have Alec Baldwin, and we have as well uh, Isai. Isai <laughs> Morales. So, yeah. you know, and we and as well Nikki, because Nikki is a is a veteran as well in in, in this uh world of Hollywood. How was it working with all of them? I mean, it was, I mean, it was amazing. It was like an all-star cast for me. Nikki Whelan has been a great friend of mine for years. We've known each other since uh, 2007. She was just here in LA from Australia and we cast her in this surf film and we became friends ever since then. So she's phenomenal, a amazing human being, did a great job in this film. And then you have, uh, you know, the three amigos. You have Terrence Howard playing the lead, Brian Setter. He, he crushed it as Detective Setter. I mean, watching, I mean, we come in, we talk about his character, we talk about the story, and then Terrence just brings his side of it. And it's amazing to watch it. Um, and he, he was such a team player and he came up with great ideas. I really empower my actors to bring their side of it. I'll tell them kind of, hey, this is how we see the film. And then they give us their side. And it's amazing. Just like Alec Baldwin. I mean, I mean, it, it, when you're directing Alec Baldwin, you're more like, hey, okay, we're going to shoot here and do this and that. And then he gives you what he's going to give you. And it's phenomenal every time. <laughs> and Isai, Isai is just... He's an amazing human being. He's wild man, and it just he fit the character so well. Um, he's such a great actor. Um, he's amazing. In the Mission Impossible's. He can play good guy, bad guy, anything. He's just got all the levels. He's he's phenomenal. And then to be honest, the rest of the supporting cast was great. You know, Weston Cage, Michael Ciro, uh, Rose, Maria, Angel. All these people were just bringing it. Rocky Myers. I had a, we had a great cast of people. Because of the SAG strike, a lot of actors were available at the same time. So we got lucky with that. Okay. And um, do you have any, like, memory uh, while on set that you just go back to it and just remember it and have a laugh? A laugh or just, like, like amazement? Like Exactly. Really yeah. You know, yeah. Like, <laughs> uh, like, 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 let's put it like an example. Like, you just sat down or you're with your family or with friends and you're like, you know what? Mm -hmm. When we were filming Crescent City, this happened. <laughs> Well, you know, it's kind of amazing. It's actually, I'm sitting there on set and it's our first day with the DP and we're setting up a shot and we're blocking Terrence and Nikki. It's our first shot of the movie. They're sitting at the doorstep of her house and they're talking. It's a very deep conversation. Um, and I'm sitting there and I'm looking at it and I'm looking at uh, my producers around me and I'm like, so I have Vince Jolivet, my producer, who's won an Oscar. I have Eric Brenner, who's also a producer, who won an Oscar. I have... Terrence Howard, who was nominated for an Oscar. And then I have Alec Baldwin coming next week, who is an Oscar. I mean, I was just like, we had this stellar cast of just, and, and team. I was like, this is really happening. And then we, I remember that first take, I just, uh, I look back at my DP after our first take and I yelled cut and I was like, this is going to be good. This is going to be great. Like, I just knew right then. You just know sometimes. And the energy with the cast, everybody, everybody got along so great that it really helped the energy support. Because you're going dark in this movie, right? So you have, mm -hmm. it's nice to have that kind of, when we're not doing takes, we're having kind of fun joking around a little bit, kind of lightening the mood a little bit, which was really nice. And um, 
is there any scene from the film that you loved um that that you loved to that you loved filming because you know there there's so many so many scenes so many uh things that you can like when you're in the editing booth but is there like a particular scene that you just like yes i just that was the scene that i loved i mean it's hard to say which scene was a per like there was a couple of them but i will say there's one that sticks out to me we were shooting in this beautiful church right and it's this huge chapel and terrence is in there and he's praying to God. He's been dealing with all of these demons and problems, his life, his job, and the serial killer, everything all at once. And this janitor is coming through and it's just this wide, beautiful shot. And it's just so cinematic. And Terrence, man, there's even a part of the scene we had to trim down a little bit, but it was so emotional and so beautiful. I, it gave me the chills. I would say that was one of my, one of my favorite scenes. There's also another scene with Nikki when she gets picked up um by the so-called so-called killer which it's this beautiful wide shot with her sitting in the park waiting for this guy to come up in a car and he picks her up and the light comes in the car and it hits her face perfectly and that wasn't even planned and then the car drives off and it's just it was just so beautiful cinematic i mean it, it just uh, those were two really magical moments and then obviously when i had them all in the room with the detective uh with captain how alec baldwin's character with the entire cast together the you know the leads I was watching that scene of them just bouncing off each other. And it was just like, you know, it just, it's just really great to see great work and appreciate it at the same time. Um, you did mention at the beginning of the interview that, uh, that going, making these type of films is something that you are like, uh, you like to do them, but not so frequent. Um, is there a specific genre that you'd like to touch up on in regards when you want to direct? Yeah, I, I actually love all genres, to be honest. I just said it's like if you do too many thrillers in a year, you're just like it's really intense. And sometimes it's nice to lighten it up with some comedy or some th uh, action comedies or I mean, I like all genres, rom-coms, all of them. So like I kind of have a big variety of different style movies I like to make. I, I, I'm very much into the commercial style films. You know, I, I look at it from a producer point of view, like I just want the audiences to really enjoy the ride. Um so I would the only moves I kind of don't do as many of is dramas. Okay. Yeah. Is is there like any franchise or or IP that you would like to work on in the future? Well, I mean, if they want to hire me to direct Superman, I'm in. <laughs> no. Okay. Um, I mean, look, I, I honestly I I I'm I'm looking forward to doing a, a big slate of romantic comedies. I love them and I think they're coming back. So we're looking in, into those and um I have an amazing film I'm going to direct next uh, that we're going to be casting here shortly. And uh, it's called Mermaid. It's got actually nothing to do with the actual mermaid, but it's an amazing kind of man on fire meets no country for old men. And I'm really looking forward to that one next. Yeah. OK, that's amazing. And RJ, this will be my my final question for you today. If you could describe Crescent City with one word, what would it be? Riveting. <laughs> <laughs> okay yeah i see it i see it i see it i see it yeah so rj thank you very much um for giving us the time to talk about crescent city um super excited for everybody to get to see it and um i loved it and i do hope to see you once again in another project here and we can talk about it love it yeah anytime thank you so much no thank you <laughs> bye bye all right bye